You want to learn how to remove those total loads off your credit report in the next 30 days? I got you. Maybe it might be 60 or maybe it might be 90. However, I'm going to show you how to slap them things off your credit report. Maybe you have some missed payments. Maybe it's holding you back from getting a house. I got you. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step by step. So with that being said, you already know what time it is. Let's get on the Hey, welcome to today's lesson. Me and my boy Mike, we're going at it again. The one deletion away system to show you how to remove those student loans off your credit report. Maybe 30 days, maybe 60, 90. No matter how long it takes, we just want to show you the process. Because if you have an open, if it's closed, no matter what it is, it can come off your credit report. Don't listen to all these people telling you what it can't do. I'm going to show you what you can do. Hey, Mike. So, you know the first process. I know it sounds repetitive. However, I want to get it ingrained in y'all head so once you understand, you'll be able to talk it. And if anybody asks you any questions, you'll be like, yo, boom, 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 boom. Or go to the video, you know, you'll be able to spit it out. Hey, can I can I explain? Hey, let me do end of mind. Let me do end of mind. I know people right. know your end of mind. I want to do my end of mind, right? So okay. I want to tell everybody a little bit about the story, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to drag it on like I normally do. But <laughs> end of mind, bro, like I talk to my students about this all the time. Um, a lot of people talk about generation. Oh, I got you, Mike. I got you. You know what? We can. So, so my end of mind, right? So I know we. I tell my stu students all the time when we thinking about credit, the way credit is, and a lot of people don't want to go through the full process. When I grew up, I wasn't able to go in the store and get what I want, right? Because my mom always said, and if your mom says something like this, drop a seven in the uh, in the comments. All right. When you go in this store, you better not touch nothing. Now, growing up, that did something to me. It made me frugal. It made me hold my money in so much that I didn't know that I was missing out on investments. When I bought my first house, I didn't know I could have used it as an investment. When I, after I bought my first house, I, I, I got stationed in San Diego. So what I did was I took my first house, rented it out, and I used the income from me renting out my first house to purchase my second house. If my mom, well, I ain't gonna say that's all, but. If I were to, if I was to know that I can go and you know in the store and touch something or get something, I wouldn't be stingy with my money. You know what I'm saying? So, I want to say like it's like generational wealth is gained by generational knowledge. You feel me? Well, you foolish, but stingy. <laughs> hey, look, I was stingy, boy. Hey, look, my hey, look. I'm talking about stingy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even give myself allowance. You feel me? I, I was just holding all my money. I kept all my money in the bank. And then the moment I ran into adversity, I would spend the money I was saving instead of investing it. Bro, in 2000, I forgot what time it was when we invested in Bitcoin. That was the biggest investment I did. And it was only $1,000. And I can't believe I'm saying only $1,000, but it made us so much money, bro. When we cashed out, I think we cashed out around 10K. And I wish we would have saved it, you know what I'm saying? But that's it for my end of mind. I, hey, look, that's just a little snippet, but I'm going to come back. Y'all going to learn my story, man, because... I think I got a powerful story, but go ahead, Dave. Let's get back into it. All right. Hey, just getting clear on what you want. So for I think for y'all right now, it's getting clear on removing these student loans. Maybe you're trying to get a house or maybe it's just holding you back. Maybe you have a lot of late payments on it. However, the number one thing with student loans, you have to pay it back. No matter, I ain't gonna, you know what, we're gonna talk about that. But right now we're gonna say you're gonna have to pay it back for now. Um, but the next step you wanna do is analyze your credit report. So what you want to do is go to Smart Credit. Link is in the description. It's no longer a dollar no more. I'm sorry, I don't have that 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 guarantee no more. So what you want to do is analyze it. So you can see it, Mike. Yep. All right. So what you want to do? We talk about this all the time, right? However, let's let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. So um, I have a few things circled already, but what you want to do is just pay attention to the account number. You want to pay attention to the account type account detail, account status, monthly payment, date open. As you can see, it's not correct um, on all three. I'm gonna make it smaller. It's not correct on all three. Balance, you wanna check that out. Monthly terms, high credit, credit limit, past due, charged off, last reported, everything on here you wanna check. Date last active, I didn't circle that one. However, it's supposed to have something, right? And also, this is an important thing. Um, so this is a um, key part too now. If it's a student loan, right, and it's quote unquote charged off, 
how is it or a collection? They they're not supposed to be reporting like a collection. You're not supposed to be reporting a collection like thirty day, thirty day, thirty day, thirty day. As like, because as you can see, it's okay, okay here, but not here. So they're not supposed to be doing that. So this is another violation. However, we're not going to send the letter off. You just want to get, um, you just want to analyze your credit report first. Sorry for the uh, people who watch the old videos, but this is for everybody who's new. Well, it's not yeah, specifically so, hey. them. We won't, we won't walk you through the whole process because it's a whole process because, you know, the older videos, I just basically showed you how to do this part. My first video talking about student loans. I think the second video, I just explained it. But now I just want to walk you through the whole process um, of everything that we learned, everything that we acquired with me and my information so you can go ahead and start removing them all. No, all right. So after you analyze your credit report, you have to clean, clean up your personal information. All right, so personal information such as old addresses, old jobs, old phone numbers. Now, why this is important? I'm gonna tell you why this is important. If your information is sold or is transferred to someone else, they will have access to your old information. Now, if your old information is not on your credit report, what it will force them to do is to actually do the investigation. Now, a lot of people say, like a lot of people say that the information come back verified. But what me and Dave personally know is these people are lazy. They're gonna investigate themselves, but they don't want to do no work. They ain't even got it, bro. They got so many clients that they got to investigate. They ain't even trying to. So what we do is we set them right. up. So, so now when they try to investigate themselves, well. They already know they got the right information because the normal person don't know how to clean up their credit report. The normal credit repair agency don't know how to clean up a credit report. So we about to show y'all something that they don't even know because you know why? Because we have to teach a lot of them and that's mm -hmm. fine. So yep. once, we teach them the, once we teach them the right way, we good. Go ahead, Dave, if you go ahead. So the personal information, I'm a, there's a video, I explain this thing so in detail. I don't want to make this video too long, but if you watch, I'm gonna put it like somewhere up here and you'll be able to click it, save it for later, and you'll be able to walk through the whole process on how to clean up your personal information. So I'm going to show you stuff that people don't even show you where to go, what to look for, what they, um, all the laws to actually remove all your personal information. It's crazy, but it's, it's simple. All right. All right. Now, now we'll go to the, hey, the next step. We got to go to the next step. Let me all share the screen real quick. I, and I, then I, the next, the next I important step, how much you going to say? I ain't want to give too much sauce on that. I ain't want to make okay. the video too long. I want I want yeah. people to watch, implement like that. Watch and implement. Hey, put right. this thing side by side. Split screen on your computer. But go ahead. So the next thing, hey man, I love saying this. Freeze the snitches, man. Hush hey, <laughs> hey, hush them up. So the reason why you want to hush them up is like people. Well, these secondary agencies are telling on you. So you think the credit bureaus are going to the. Um, to U.S. Right. Department of whatever, of education, no. They're talking to Lexus Nexus. They're talking to CoreLogic. They're talking to Seishu. They're talking to, probably not Innovis, but they're talking to, well, Innovis. They're probably talking to- um, ARS. ARS. They're probably talking to Factor Trust. They're talking to everybody and they, they got your information. So once they just talk to them and say, oh, this person, do, 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 verify, you know, this system talk. You know, I don't know the algorithm. A lot of people think they know the algorithm. We don't know it, but we know that the Sage Stream, Innovis, Lexus Nexus, they selling your information to the big credit bureaus. Once these uh secondary agencies grab your information, they literally they they just sell it to everybody, right? So that's why I tell my clients, do not apply for nothing when going through the credit repair process. Like even if you go on a foot locker and they say, Hey, you want 10% off, they give you the card, they get in the 10%. But they about to sell your information over and over and over. These debt collectors just buying your information over and over and over again. That's why when you dispute something or you try to um, change your address, it'll come back updated and they'll update it with the new address. It's probably because you out here buying stuff or applying for stuff. So just freeze the snitches, hush them up. Don't give them access to. Don't give them access to talk to nobody because if they can't talk to nobody, these credit girls, they are like. I guess they're like the red blood cells. So once you once you cut off that, bro, the person the, the entity will die, right? So if the entity is not getting any oxygen or the blood ain't pumping, then it's easier to get the information off. You know, my favorite thing is setting everybody up. So with this part is setting everybody up is secret letter. So I'm gonna show you the letter. The secret letter is free. Click the link, it's in the description, grab it for free. However, it's gonna take about five to 10 minutes. I know y'all say, oh, I'm selling y'all, it costs this for this, right? No, the secret letter is free. You pay for the dispute playbook. Um, if you wanna get it, you can grab it. However, it's gonna help y'all with this process. But 
The secret letter is free and I'm gonna show you how to properly use it. The secret letter is the investigation request letter. So what you wanna do is um, add your the account name and account number. So you as Department of Education or whatever kind of student loans you have, put it the account name and then grab the account number. Now, it don't have to have the full account number. It can have 534XXXX, um, that's okay. I know a lot of people have questions about that, so that is fine as well. So put the account name and then put the account number. Now, once you do that, um, you basically, you just send the letter off. You're gonna send it to Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, and you're gonna add two forms of identification, one with the driver's license and one with um, proof of, like proof of residency, right? So it could be um, a bill that's in your name, it could be a light bill, cell phone bill, um, something that has your name and address, account, I mean, bank statement, just as long as you send two forms of identification because time is valuable. So we don't want them to say, oh, this is frivolous. Uh, we need to verify who you actually are. So make sure you add two forms. Now don't take a picture of the envelope, take a picture of the whole um, letter so they can see it. And as well as the driver's license, don't have it all crazy. Put it on a, a white piece of paper and take a full picture, explode it so they can properly see it. Now we're going to go to the next step, which is very important. So make sure you send us all, send it all certified. I forgot about that part. Send it all certified. It's going to cost you actually about five, $15, $20 to send it all certified, probably less than that. But you want to make sure you have the tracking number because it's going to be key once we use the CFPB. I know the CFPB website, the thing's down, but you can still call in and still do um, what you need to do. But we're going to talk about it. That's the last step, the chaos. Hey, hold on. Hey, Dave. Hey, look, hit that bell notification because a lot of you guys are asking <laughs> questions, but Dave drop a video every day and I'm probably, I'm pretty sure that he's going to answer your question. A lot of you guys aren't getting your questions answered and all we can say is refer to this other video, but just hit the notification so you can get notified. If, that, if Dave is talking about something that you think you need to listen to, just listen to it. If he's not, don't worry about it. But if you hit that notification, you'll get um, notified every Listen time. Listen to everything. <laughs> I'll play. Hey, I'll play. <laughs> so I have multiple videos showing you how you can build up your credit. I'm going to link it to up here somewhere where we talk about building your credit. But now this part is key because you're going to be waiting. So while you're waiting, you want to be building up your credit. You want to be adding some positive accounts because if you don't have a credit card, you need to add a credit card because it's going to help your credit score. If you don't have an installment account, which is like a personal loan, student loan, car loan, um, you want to get one of those accounts right now. You don't have to get a personal loan. You can go do, you can do a, um, what I'm talking about, Lockbox, Sell, Credit Strong. Those three places is going to help you save your money and build credit at the same time. Now, once you start building your credit up um, and start adding these positive accounts for your credit report, you're going to see your credit score fluctuate up and down because you're, you're cleaning it up, but you're adding. But once everything completely comes off, you're going to see the progress of everything that you've been doing. I know it's going to take time, but it's key to do this. Um, just do this part as well while you're waiting for the investigation to come back. Now, when the investigation comes back, it's the KO method, right? So we talk about BBB. We talk about the Attorney General's Office. We talk about the um, CFPB. So you want to knock them out. Um, I have a video explaining all this process. You want to talk a little bit more about the KO method, Mike? Because I know when I say it, they probably think I'm crazy. I know people are getting the results, but when you explain it too, hey, they need at least a little information on how you think about it. So no. when doing the KO method, it's just it's just extra layer of protection on what you're doing. It's just to make sure that you got eyes on your stuff. To be honest, when you send the, the investigation letter, they probably throw that thing back. Like, they don't care. This is gonna say everything is verified. But once mm -hmm. you do the knockout method, you got the CFPB on your back, uh, behind you. You got the BBB behind you. You got the Attorney General behind you. You got everybody behind you, making sure everything gets done. Everybody's there to, to uphold your consumer rights, which is, you know, being taken advantage of. The reason why the Fair Credit Reporting Act is called Fair Credit Reporting Act is because they weren't playing fair. It was, if y'all know anything about redlining where the rich people were buying houses and the poor people couldn't get it because of credit, that's the same thing. The These banks and stuff, the reason why CFPB was uh, put in place is because they were putting everything on your credit report. If you got a divorce, if you went to jail, if you were, you know what I'm saying? All this type of stuff that will, was not supposed to be judged by uh, judging your credit worthiness, your credit, your ability to pay stuff back. These people are just not playing fair. So that's why the KO method is so powerful. 